Multiplay 3.0 Tutorial 1 Download and Setup. So here I'm going to show you how to download the program to get it operating and then basically my setup, my custom choices for the way that I want the program to look on my computer screen. So first of all download, I'll give you a link to this down below, it'll bring up this page. Click on check it out at the Dasher forum here, click on news and releases. Click on the latest version with download links. That'll bring up this page. If down the bottom here, it'll say version 3.0.213.0 is available for download here. You can click here and then download it. Your virus software may put up kind of a warning and you may have to override that. I have not found any viruses in the software itself. So some virus programs just don't recognize it because it's a program that's mostly used by community theater audio people or show control people. So. Uh, you may have to override your virus in order to get it downloaded. If you want to try the version of Multiplay with video cues, you can download this version down here. Uh, the version I'm going to be using does not have the video cues in it. It's only audio and MIDI and OSC and those kind of commands. So download it from here. Now once you've downloaded the program, it'll come in in a zip file. You're going to expand the zip file. And one of the neat things about the program, once it's expanded, if you go in and you open it up, you'll see the executable multiplay.exe, double click it and it'll run. There's no need to actually install the program. It runs right from the folder. You can actually put this on a thumb drive and run it right from the thumb drive if you wish. So it's one of the nice things about it, it does not have to be installed. Okay, let me show you some of the common things that I will do to uh, set up the program so it's the way that I want it to be. One of the things I like to do is do cue color so that I know specifically when I'm looking at my cue list, which are my audio cues, which are my MIDI cues that may be going to my light board that are lighting changes, which are my OSC command cues which are going out to my presentation laptop that's playing back videos or slides, Dub my control cues in another color here pink to let me know that they are affecting playback but they don't actually contain any kind of commands in them. And then wait command, I did yellow with red. You can do this whatever you want, it's very customizable. You go to production properties and you can also access this from the file menu up here, production properties, or just click on the icon. And you're going to go to appearance and cue types. And here's where you change the background color and the font color for the different types of cue types. And you can see where I've changed like the weight command, background yellow, font red, MIDI commands, background blue, uh, font color black. You cannot change the font size over here. Scroll back up to the top and go to miscellaneous and here's where you can change the cue list font size and style of font but you can't actually change it in there. So I've adjusted this up to be 14 for the font size. I'm using Arial and Common Cues 10, uh, hot buttons uh, size 12, and then Arial for those. So you can do that there. Now, again, cue types, when you're selecting these down the bottom, I've set my cue color style to be cue type, because if I do common and say accept, everything's just gonna be black like this. So again, I prefer to have it color coded so that I know. So I'm going to do the Q types and then I'm going to select down here. I want it colored by Q type and accept. So now it's going to do those colored backgrounds. So that's how you set that for the colored backgrounds. And that is how you set up the font size, etc. Uh, notes, you can set up your notes. The header background is going to be black and then the font is going to be kind of orange over here and then the body of the notes would be here and the font's going to be white. So even in your notes window over here, you can set up the look of that. Uh, progress, basically when a cue is playing, you'll see a green bar progressing along. If it's paused, it'll be blue. Uh, the last five seconds before the cue is ending, it'll come up in red. So that's where you set your colors here. So again, it's very, very customizable as far as that goes. Uh, and this is your button style over here. So you have the three buttons, the stop all, fade all, and advance. Uh, right now we're just using go and stop all and fade all. We don't have the advanced button up here, but you can see black backgrounds and yellow for the stop all and blue for the fade all down in here. So again, very customizable. Now the next thing that you need to look at is, again, in production properties, is you want to go to audio and set up your audio source. You click on the add button down here and then you choose your audio source. 
I currently have two different sources here, but I'm using my USB speaker sound device. I also have an audio box that I can choose from down here. And you can have as many of these patches as you want. Make sure that you have it checked that they are available. And then as you're doing your cues, you can pick which audio device the media cue is going to go to. And we'll show you that when we're actually programming cues. So that's where you're going to set up your audio. The next thing you'll want to do is if you're planning on sending MIDI commands to say a light board or to lighting software, you're going to want to set up your MIDI. So again, you click add to add a MIDI patch in. You can call this whatever you want to call it. Uh, right now I have two different types of MIDI patch devices in here. I have an internal MIDI connection and I also have my audio box USB. Make sure that you've checked enabled to have those both there. Again, when you're doing MIDI commands, then you can choose which MIDI device you're sending the MIDI commands out through. As far as uh, serial, I'm not going to do anything with serial here, but networking, um, I'm going to want to do my OSC commands from here. So again, you can call it whatever you want. The destination, this is going to be the computer that I'm trying to control. So this could be my PowerPoint laptop that is on the same local area network that I'm on with my show control computer. So this would be the IP address of that PowerPoint or presentation software laptop. Uh, interface, just select default. 8000 works as a port type. For encoding, you want to select OSC for that. And then make sure again you check enable down here. This will have you all set up and ready to go then if you want to send OSC commands. Messaging, I don't have anything set up here, but if I was sending commands to a, um, another computer, like say for my stage manager, I could set that up here. Windows, this is mostly going to be about the video thing. And then layouts. Uh, when you're in a current layout, whatever you do here, whatever you set up will be saved to that current layout. So right now I'm in the default layout. So any changes I made are going to be in that default layout. If I switch to layout two, then any changes that I would make in that layout would be saved there. Um, you can add as many layouts as you want and different types. Anytime you make changes here, make sure you click the accept button and do that. And then how you change layouts, you go up here, here's the default layout, here's layout two, which changes slightly. But again, any changes I made here, when I save the program will be saved to layout two. And this is the default layout. So as you're changing things, make sure you take a look up here at what layout that you're in uh, because you're changing things in that particular layout. So when you hit the save button, they're going to be saved to that layout. So you don't accidentally save something to a layout that you didn't intend to do for there. So uh, windows can be set however you like here. You can grab them and move them around. Now, one unique thing about this program if I just grab a window and move it around, and I'm going to show you that. If I collapse the program down to a smaller window, notice how this window just floats. And that can happen with a lot of the windows. You can actually have them just floating anywhere, and they're not in the master window here. If you want a window to be part of the master window setup here, notice that when I click and hold, I get some positioning things here. Like this will position this window across the top. This would fill it in in the middle. This would put it right in the middle and fill up the whole middle. This would fill it in the bottom. I'll just give you for instance here. If I let go there, it fills in just the top middle here. If I go back to the middle, it'll fill the whole center section of the screen. Bottom, it would just do the bottom of the screen. So you'll have these little helper icons. If I go over here to the side, it would fill in there. So you can experiment around as you're moving windows around where they're actually going to fill in. For example, I can grab my notes window and move it out of there. Notice how everything here filled back in and expanded. But I can grab my notes window, go back over to here and say, now I'd like that to be there. And then it will kind of fill in. Then you can also grab and move lines around to expand these a little bit. And what it does is proportionally try to put these proportionally in that area of the screen. So now when I bring this down to a smaller size, you'll see that everything stays within the master window. It doesn't uh, just drift freely on the desktop. So that's the difference as far as laying out your windows there. Cue columns 
can be adjusted up here. Uh, right click on the top here and it'll give you a list of different things that you can see. I'm not displaying my hotkey or my pan or pitch, which is something you can change, or my advance on here. Uh, you can click all columns or and you can click reset column sizes, reset column order. If you want to move something around, like you'd like to have your script uh, definition over here, you can put that over here. So it'll be description first in the script. So anything that you would like to move around, uh, you can move those simply by grabbing the header up here and then sliding it over and that will change the position. Uh, columns are resizable, just grab there and you can resize the columns themselves, kind of like uh, the, the way that you do with a spreadsheet program. As far as two defaults go, again, you would go into your preferences menus here and you can set up queue defaults. One of the things I do for the audio cues is set the volume at negative 16 decibels. That gives me a little bit of headroom when I'm doing my audio cues instead of having no headroom at the top. So again, you can take a look through here at the different cues. If there's something that you would like to do that works a certain way, you can look at the different cues and do that with them and adjust them so that it's customized. Personally, the only thing I really do is make sure that this audio cue is set to the negative 16 decibels. Shortcut keys, which are in here, if you'd like a definition of shortcuts, they're there. You can put some additional shortcuts keys in, like pause and resume, and I'll show you that later when I'm actually doing some audio cues. So you can actually put in your own shortcuts. And then finally, your backup folder here, you can designate where the backup folder is going to be and it's going to auto save uh, every so many minutes and you can set that so that it actually auto saves in case something should happen and you don't lose all the work that you're doing there and the maximum number of backups to keep and then you can always resort to a backup if something should happen like you have a power outage and your file becomes corrupted you can always resort to a backup so all right that's pretty much it for download and setup